Castle West for the final of the Fitzgerald Woodlands House Hotel, Limerick Junior A football uh, between Caffamore and Kildare and Palace Kenry. Delighted to be joined by Matt O'Callaghan in the studio here in Newcastle West for SportingLimerick.com. At 3 p.m. we have the senior final between Adair and Valley Andrews, but Matt first, an intriguing Junior A final. Yeah, I suppose it is. Um, John, it, 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 it's the product of the first final under the new format. Um, uh, the, the county board um, this year had dispensed with the um, divisional championships and the, the, the championship is now running on all county bases. So like the, the, the teams coming here today, will, they certainly will not have a shortage of matches. And I, I suppose the, the best thing about all from them, and, and speaking to the two teams in advance of this, um, and the they're, they're giving the thumbs up to the new system. Is, is that there is a structure? Like you, you know, you have four group games, and if you finish in 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 the in in, in the top three, you, you advance to the county, county quarter final, where my. Um, uh, oh, sorry to the county series um, where the top teams will play the play the second teams in preliminary quarterfinals and then you have the the four teams the top the group in in each case going directly to the quarterfinals playing the winners of the pre-qualifying group if that all makes sense but that's the way it has been <coughs> and it, it, it is a good structure now the we background to both of these teams coming here today is Capamore top their group and went directly Captain to the quarter final. They just had one defeat in, in the group stages Central and that was field, something of a surprise defeat to Monley. Um, on the other hand, Kildimer's form line, in the group stages was patchy, John, in, in that they lost Barry two of the four games and, and they got into the, 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 the series the into the county board, series. Um, by finishing third in their group, which meant that they qualifying Nash. route, and, but they have embraced the, 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 the qualifying route with a plum, like, because they, 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 they have, they have saved, saved their best football on, uh, until until the knockout stages which which, which is timely and 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 and, and which is good and and um, now that they have hurling out of the way probably don't like the way in which they have it out of the way and that they were beaten in the county semi-final uh, the premier hurling by, by Gary Spillane all the focus now can can be on on, on football looking at the two teams now Matt you're looking at a cap and more side or backbone by a Former Limerick star, I was talking to PJ Ryan, Capamore manager during the week, and he was the saying that there probably wouldn't be Gaelic football in Capamore. The standard is without Dear Mitchie, an absolute stalwart for Capamore. Yeah, that, that, that's ab absolutely true. Like you, you, you can talk about legends, and you can talk about players that are irreplaceable, and there's no doubt that Mr. Football in Capamore is Dear Mitchie. He is. He has been around so long, and he has done so much for Capamore, but. Uh, talking about Capamore, Capamore were relegated last year um, from intermediate r ranks, and they were they were relegated, John, after uh, three very very poor years. Like th th their relegation, in many ways, was a slow burner, because I just take you back. They they were county junior champions in 2012, so they're going for their second title in six years here today. Um, they in 2014 they topped the group. In, in, in the Premier Intermediate Football Championship and since then they've won one game in 2015 um, they've won one uh, they beat they beat in 2015 they beat Castleman in just one win again 2016 2017 the inevitable happened they, they, they won no game and and and, and um, were relegated and I think it's a great credit due to them that they have regrouped because certainly Campamore was 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 um, football in Campamore was certainly um, definitely not to the fore for the last three years. But I suppose in many ways, uh, 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 there's an explanation for it in that it coincides the um, Campamore being promoted to senior holding ranks and with, with, with quite a crossover of players. Obviously, the focus was on the senior hurling team, and uh, once you're promoted to senior hurling from from intermediate, um, the, the focus first of all has to be on survival. 
and and end consolidation and like uh, um it's a fact to say that that in in the, the, the three years the two years that they were up in senior hurling um they struggled they struggled it it was a constant struggle and of course they have fallen back through the trap door this year they've gone back to premier in, in intermediate for this year or for next year so um i i, I suppose that it goes some way to explaining let's say We'll give you a quick check in the teams now before we preview Kilima Palace Kenry's team. Kappa Moore line out as follows with Brian Leahy in goals, Jason Fitzgibbon, Dermot Sheehy, and Ono Donoghue in the full back line with Bill Creamer, Con Burkery, who captains the side from centre back, and Jack Campbell in the half back line. Eamon Sheehan and Peter O'Brien line up in midfield with Brian Fitzgerald, Declan Deere, and Packy Dyle in the half forward line. Andy Murphy, Connor Sheehan, and Joel Lonergan make up the Kappa Moore team. Kilima Palace Kenry line out as follows. John Chalk in goals with Brian Howard, Kevin O'Connell and Evan Carroll in the full back line. Mossy Sheehan, Tony McCarthy and Barry Walsh make up the half back line. Keel Maloney and Bob McCure in midfield with Connor Staff, Sean Barry and Darrell Walsh in the half forward line. Dara Deegan and Larkin O'Leary as well as Peter Nash make up the Kilima Palace Kenry full forward line. Matt, Tony McCarthy captains this Kilima Palace Kenry team. Hopes probably ro rely on them today. Yes, certainly. Um, uh, 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 as you rightly said, uh, of, of, of the Limerick. Whilst Peter Nash is uh, more or less a regular on, on, on the team, Tony McCarthy has been a panel member um, for the last couple of years. Yes, they'll be relying on him. And just looking at at, at the programme here, um, I see Tony McCarthy posted at centre back. I, I, I think he will probably play there. I'm not so sure that Peter Nash will play that far in. Um, what, what he brings to the team, can they can can they afford to leave him in there? Certainly, I suppose they can afford to leave him in there if they can find a strategy to get the ball in there and and, and get it in quickly. But just just aside from the team at the moment, looking at the subs and and and, and we see the we see the name of of Kyle Hayes there. Um, he's he's listed as number 29. Um, now Kyle Hayes made a return to to Kildama Palace Kenry footballers in, in the semi final, and he announced his return in a tight game with Father Cases by scoring a vital goal. So I'm just wondering, and we just see him out there. He was one of the first to arrive at the ground when we were here today. Um, we're just wondering. Um, I, I certainly think we we will see him um, at some stage of the game. But I'm just wondering how soon will we see him? We'll find that out as time goes on here in Newcastle West. Referee Jonathan Hayes from St. Sennans, the man in charge, and the middle today of this Limerick Junior A football championship final in Newcastle West. We're pretty much all set to go as he consults with his two lines. And Matt, I'm going to ask you for a prediction as we see Tony McCarthy lining out at midfield early on here as we prepare for the throne. Yeah, I, I'm given a cautious vote to Kappa Moore because the way they have regrouped and basically they have many of the players that they had in 2012, many of the players with, with inter, in, intermediate experience, many players that have already counted junior medals. I'm reluctantly I'm giving them a cautious vote. It's Kildama Palace Kenry with Tony McCarthy on the ball here as we get things underway. He lays the ball off to Bob McKeown. Kildama moved the ball forward now. Keel Maloney. Keel Maloney loses control and it's Kappa Moore to come out with it. Loose ball though falls to Connor Staff for Kilima Palace Henry. He's under pressure from a few Kappa Moore defenders, lays the ball off. Kilima Palace Henry now on the attack. The pass is poor though from Darrell Walsh and Kappa Moore should take control of the ball. Down to her left hand side and it's Eamon Sheehan with possession. Hand pass is poor from Sheehan down. It's Sheehy that tidies up from their point of view and it's Kappa Moore now hand passing the ball up the field, working it out of their defence. Ball now, last possession here, and it's Connor Staff who wins it. Back for Kilima Palace Henry. He lays the ball off, and it's another attack with Keel Maloney now. Maloney looks up to assess his options, looks to deliver into the full forward line, but only waiting there is Dear Machi. Kaffa Moore full back, and they have to rework it again with Barry Walsh. Walsh now on the run, moving into the 21, hand passes it off inside to Dara Deegan. Now Deegan on the run, good defender from Kaffa Moore. The ball's led back to Peter Nash. Nash now. Under pressure and it's Kappa Moore defending well here. 
Referee John Denae is playing advantage. In the end, it's Peter O'Brien that is fouled. Free given to Cathal Mormat. Lively start from Kildoyma Palace Henry. Lively, a lively start, but going through an awful lot of hands and an awful lot of energy used up in the first minute or two of, of, of the game. Um, really, you could say going nowhere. It's Cathal Moore now slowing things down as taking the free ball in possession with Bill Creamer. Creamer lays it off now. Coming forward with the ball is Con Burkery. Captain Moore, Captain, under pressure here from Connor Staff. Burkery still moving with the ball. The referee John Lane is playing advantage again, but it's inside Tay Machine in turn. He lays it off to Sheehy. Sheehy, long high ball in, looking for Joel Lonergan inside. It's too far for Lonergan. It's over the end line, Matt. Maybe an idea of what Captain Moore are going to try to do in delivering the ball long. Yeah, deliver it long. And Dermot Sheehy, you now he seems to have abandoned his full back position. And he, or he, he, he looks to be following Larkin O'Leary. Um, rather than being positioned uh, out at centre back, and I suppose um, Dermotchi has been so uh, around so long that probably the Palace Kinry, um, Kildare Palace Kinry tactic, and not unexpected, w- would be to draw the full back around the place. So uh, so far in the early minutes, he he, he seems to um, be following Lock and O'Leary, but now I see him he has resumed full back duties. Superb kick out there from John Chalk from the restart. Mark taken and a free award to Kilima Palace Henry here. Just on the Caffamore 65 metre line, it's going to be Barry Walsh to take this. Walsh assessing his options in front of him, not too much on, so he's to go long. He's looking for Deegan inside. There's a push in the back by Jason Fitzgibbon. Just to give Kilima Palace Henry and Peter Nash first opportunity for the first score of the game. It's going to be a tricky enough one for Peter Nash, Matt, but. One, he'll expect himself to score. Yeah, I, I, I think he may fancy himself, but I, I, I think he's, he's actually leaving it to Sean Barry. Um, seems to be the man that's stepping over it. And I think this lad plays, plays minor with Kildare Palace Kingery, as far as I know. And he, if he's the guy I'm thinking of, he certainly has... He, he, he kicks a dead ball very well. Four points in the semi-final victory for Kildare Palace Kingery last time out. It's Sean Barry lining up the first free of this game. Pretty good strike from Sean, but it's to the left and wide. Nervy enough kick, Matt. He struck the ball fairly well, but the radar was off. Yeah, the radar the, the radar was off, and uh, it, it was quite a bit off, actually. He'll, he'll be disappointed with it, because for a right-footed kicker, getting um, a free in, the, in that type of position, and, and, and the conditions are practically near perfect, despite there being rain overnight and this morning, um, he, he certainly would have fancied himself, and... It, it, it was a chance. It's a chance gone to get off the mark. But Kildare Palace Kenry in this opening, we're almost up to five minutes now. They 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 they, they have dominated. Now we might get the answer to it. No, Peter Nash has, has kicked that one wide. They they have nothing to show for early dominance. Yeah, second wide for Kildare Palace Kenry. Peter Nash, who you'd expect Matt will take a lot of the shots on goal. He'd work himself into that shooting position as the game goes on. As Brian Lee, he looks to take this kick out for Capamore and no rush. And it's Lee that takes it. Looking for Eamon Sheehan in the middle of the park, but she isn't. Sheehan isn't able to win that cleanly, and it's Keel Maloney comes away with the ball for Kilima Palace Kenry. Under pressure, he lays the ball off, and it's to Sean Barry. Forced to look back into Massey Sheen is right half back and the ball is now with Tony McCarthy. McCarthy on the attack looks to fashion a shooting chance McCarthy does but that's going to be the right and wide again third wide for Kildare of Palace Kenry Matt maybe a bit of nerves in their system in the early stages yeah of course they're going for their first title at this level and um, they certainly will be disappointed to know that their two marquee players which we flagged at the very start they have come up and uh, you, you, you must say that they were scorable opportunities um and um, the free that went to begging as well, like it's it's three chances, it's three chances gone at this stage. That they'll be disappointed because, like, when you come into a county final, um, you like to get on the front foot quickly. They've got on the front foot. They have played most of the football for the first six or seven minutes that we've had now, and they've absolutely nothing to show for it. It's Kevin Moore now with Bill Creamer trying to work the ball out into the capital down of Palace Kenry half, but he's blown up for a free. Landing the ball on the ground, I think, and it's Larkin O'Leary with the free for Kalima Palace Kenry. Lays it back to Tony McCarthy now, and on to Massey Sheen. Back to McCarthy again. McCarthy looking for options, foot pass, looking for Dara Deegan now. It's Deegan that has it, and he's fouled. Referee Jonathan Hayes waves play on, but it's Deegan now back in possession. Hand passes the ball off to Peter Nash. Nash 
under pressure unable to keep possession there Nash under pressure from Ona Donahue and it's, Kildime, or it's Moore coming away with it now with Declan Deer Deer laying the ball up but it's well defended from Kildima Palace Kenry in their corner back Brian Howard Howard along the ground lays the ball off and it's Bob McKeown now leaves it off to McCarthy and then it's Larkin O'Leary on, on the run here for Kildima Palace Kenry O'Leary good defending from Moore forcing him back inside free given though by Jonathan Hayes and another chance for Sean Barry to open the scoring mat yeah a chance for Sean Barry to, to, to redeem himself if, if it is Sean Barry that will actually take it he's standing over it but meanwhile Peter Nash is down he, he seemed to have taken a knock in that last action it appears to be a leg injury um, he's been attended to down here in front of us I think he'll be okay to resume but were Peter Nash to go off, it certainly would be a huge blow to, to Kildama Palace Kenway so early in the game. Now, this is a test for Sean Barry. It might be a little further out from goal, but it, 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 it is more directly in front of it, which, um, which should suit him. Ah. It's tail to the right and wide from Sean Barry. He threw the ball and it's Kildima Palace Kenry's fourth wide and we've got Fitzgerald Woodlands House Hotel sponsored Junior A Football Championship Final brought to you on SportingLimerick.com It's Kildima Palace Kenry no score and Capamore no score Kildima Palace Kenry as I just said with four wides Brian Lee kicks the ball out and it's Capamore in possession ball led off and it's Packy Doyle who's first two for Capamore lays the ball off hand pass Inside to Con Burkery, the Capamore ca captain. Burkery gives it long, but it's straight down the throat of Kilima Palace Kenry. Defender, and it's Tony McCarthy with the ball now. Lays it off to Bob McHugh before taking the ball back, and it's McCarthy on the run now for Kilima Palace Kenry. Looking at his option, decides to take on his op opposite number, Con Burkery, instead before laying it back to McHugh. McHugh now down to Nash, under pressure from Mona Dunno. That's certain foul. And Matt Kilima Palace Kenry with a lot of the ball, but as we've said, Four shots, four wides, and it's something they may live to regret later on in the game. Yeah, they, they, it could come back to haunt them, but they, 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 they have they, they have enjoyed a very, very dominant spell. That that's a very, very poor kick that has gone straight to Dermot Sheehy and 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 Capamore have cleared their lines, and Capamore now are trying to work it up, but it's, for the most part, Capamore have failed to get into the Kildare Palace Kenry half so far. It's Peter Nash now with possession for Kilima Palace Kenry. He's Keel Maloney on his right hand side. Maloney now, long hand pass, looking for for Deegan. Deegan beats his man now and he's on the run, under pressure straight away. But Deegan gets the shot away. But again from Kilima Palace Kenry's point of view is to the left and wide. Five wides, Matt. No score after nine minutes. Fairly poor fare so far. It's fairly poor fare. Um, the, the, the wind is blown straight across the field, so it, it, it is not a factor. Um, actually, Dara Deegan, as he was taking that shot, would have been kicking it straight into the teeth of the breeze from, if, if we're to judge by the flags down here, down here on our left. So that is not a factor. I think at this stage, even though they have failed to. Um, practically get into the Kildaimo Palace Kenry half in, in what a, what have we played? We have played over ten minutes. Um Capamore must be the happier that they're not behind at this stage. Indeed they are as Brian Lee starts play again. It's gonna be a sideline ball and it's gonna be it's not gonna be a sideline ball actually. Jonathan Hayes has decided he's gonna throw the ball in as there's another Kildaimo Palace Kenry man on the ground. Matt Capamore have struggled to get beyond the let alone halfway get into it in beyond the Kildama Palace Kenry 45 metre line as you mentioned they'll be happy enough with the score line but <laughs> how are they going to get get a stranglehold of this game um, I, I, I just don't honestly know but um, like the, the way Kildama Palace Kenry are playing it at the moment it's high energy going through a lot of hands people r running all over the place how, how long they can sustain it at that level I'm not so sure I would say that that um, um, Capamore are, are, are pacing themselves much much better I, I would say they have to because they, they, they are they are, they are, they are <coughs> pressed back um, I, I just I, I'm very anxious to see that when they finally make a foray into, in, in, into Kildamo Palace Kenry uh, territory what will they do but um, because certainly they are com totally on, on, on defensive duties so far no, it, it, it looks as if it was uh, Connor Staff that was actually down there receiving attention. 
um, seems to he's okay whatever it, whatever it is it, it, it looks as if it was a knock in the hand yeah, I think it was a dislocated finger Matt they look to be putting it trying to put it back into place he looks in a fair amount of pain anyway yeah he doesn't look too happy with, with, with the procedure um, uh, we just mentioned Jonathan Hayes it, 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 it's good to see Jonathan Hayes taking charge of this final Jonathan um, like John O'Halloran who took charge of the um, intermediate premier intermediate hurling final yesterday uh, there are a new crop of referees that are coming through and and it's great to see him being fast tracked in, in, in into into handling big game, big games John O'Halloran had an excellent performance yesterday and you'd have to say so far that today that Jonathan Hayes is totally on top of his game here it's another failed attack from Kappa Morris Kyle Gilliam Palace Kenry on the run with staff staff has finally got it, the scoring underway here in Newcastle West. Fine individual effort from Connor Staff. Ran about 30, 40 metres with the ball before landing that one between the post, Matt. And thankfully, finally, we have a score on the board. Finally, we have a score on the board. And it has come in the 13th minute. And it has come from a player that was down um, a few minutes ago with a dislocated finger. And absolutely appeared to be in, ang- in agony as it was being put back, if that's what was happening. But it certainly didn't affect his boot and his legs. And um, yeah, that was a very well taken point. Back with play now on the far side as Kildama Palace Kenry looked to launch another attack, but it's straight down the throat to Dermot Sheehy. Sheehy now, the vastly experienced Dermot Sheehy, coming forward with the ball for Capamore. He lays the ball off out to his outside where Bill Creamer is waiting. Creamer has to check his step and moves the ball forward anyway. And it's Capamore on the attack with Peter O'Brien. O'Brien now, rare far A into the. Kildama Palace Henry half ball inside straight away to Andy Murphy Murphy on the run here chance for goal for Murphy and it's in the back of the net first attack first real attack from Kaffa Moore and Murphy shows how lethal he can be in the corner very well worked move Creamer into Peter O'Brien the ball eventually coming to Murphy turned beat his man Matt and then buried it yeah, uh, we were wondering a few minutes ago um, what would happen when they would make their first foray into Kildama Palace Henry um, territory <laughs> got a very emphatic answer and a very very quick answer Andy Murphy is, 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 is lethal in, the, in those type of situations but you would have to say that it, it was a very very good purposeful uh, build, up, build up by by, by, by Capamore and uh, you'd hope now that, 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 that those couple of scores that we have got finally after almost a quarter oh we have a chance here Chance for Peter Nash. Ch- point was on after a good run from Nash. Beat O'Donoghue went for the goal and tailed to the left and wide. Matt, he may have been better off just fisting that one over the bar. I, th- I, th- I think he would because looking at the positioning of, of, of the goalkeeper, he, he, he looked to have made, made it difficult for him. And, uh, and as it proved that, that to be the case, that it, 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 was, it was well wide. Sixth wide for Kalima Palace Kenry as Brian Leahy gets play back underway here. It's a long ball in. Looking for a cap and more player. It's actually going to be Peter O'Brien who gets it. It wasn't his intention. The ball looked to be for Andy Murphy. But it's O'Brien now who has it under pressure from his opposite number, which is Bob McHugh. Referee Jonathan Hayes decides to give the free cap and more. It's Bill Creamer who will take this one. Creamer now on this right-hand side. Looking for options. He may have to play the ball back. Connor Sheen's come a long way to take possession. From his full forward Burt and it's Con Burkery now with the ball for Catmore. Beats two men, Burkery on the run here. He's gonna attempt the shot. He's certainly fouled by Keel Maloney. Matt, a needless enough free given where Con Burkery was shooting from. A needless a needless enough free and it, it, it is the first scorable free that Catmore have have got. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they make better use of it than the couple that the Kildaimo Palace Henry have got down here at the at the other end and it looks as if if it is it is Andy Murphy it's it's Andy Murphy and it hits the post his first effort from place ball hits the post and tails to the left and wide Capamore's first wide of the game 15 minutes played of this junior A football championship final between Kildaimo Palace Henry and Capamore Capamore leading one goal to one point as John Chalk gets play back underway here and it's Kappa Moore in possession looking for options now and come across the field and it's going to be Conor Sheen who's certainly moved outfield now from his initial starting place a full forward into Andy Murphy Murphy's already shown what he can do with the game's o- opening goal so far he's been fouled according to referee Jonathan Hayes it's going to be his second opportunity from a place ball Matt this one a bit easier in fact he's not going to be taking it at all it's going to be left off and it looks to be Brian Fitzgerald is going to be the man to take this one 
it, it is it, it is Brian Fitzgerald that, that 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 is I think it's Brian Fitzgerald. It's hard to see down here. It is Brian Fitzgerald that's 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 stepping up to it, and it's just in a similar position to the one that Andy Murphy took. It's another poor wide here from let's be honest, it's been a fairly poor opening 15, 16 or minutes 16 minutes here in Newcastle West. Two wides in the space of a couple of minutes from Capamore, both frees in front of the post and both frees missing the target. As John Chalk gets play back underway here and it's Massey Sheen in possession for Gilliam with Palace Kenry. Holds on to the ball under pressure from a couple of Capamore defenders and Sheen eventually kicks it away and it's taken by Tony McCarthy. McCarthy now on the run. Looking to give the ball in first time. It's a bit long for Peter Nash. Nash chase is going to be Brian Lee who's getting there. Should get there anyway and he does. Under pressure from Dara Deegan and a needless foul given away as Caffamore relaunched possession again. It's Bill Creamer over on the opposite wing from where he started on the left hand side. He's faced by Sean Barry but it's laid off and away comes Con Burkery for Caffamore. The Caffamore captain now lays the ball back and it's Eamon Sheehan and Caffamore moving this ball forward with relative ease here in this attack. Ball now inside to Joe Lonergan. Lonergan uh, forced late back to Sheehan and away comes Creamer again. Creamer decides to give it long to Murphy. Murphy now, who's looked dangerous with the goal, missed the free, but Murphy with another chance. He takes on a couple of players. Andy Murphy lays the ball inside. It's going to be a, it's going to be a free in, according to referee Jonathan Hayes, for a pullback. And Matt, it's going to be Caffamore's third chance in as many minutes from from place balls not sure who's going to take this one but the first two have been fairly poor they have been very very poor and and um, like after getting the tonic of the goal that they did they got two very scorable frees um, which you would have expected that they would have converted and and and, and taken a grip in the game uh, but it hasn't happened um, yeah, Brian Murphy had made, made no mistake didn't, didn't waste any time in taking that one Brian Fitzgerald I should say and now Caffamore lead one goal and one point after 18 minutes of this Junior A Football Champ Limerick Junior A Football Championship final brought to you on SportingLimerick.com as Connor Staff, staff marks that kick out from John Chalk and Gilliam Palace Kenry on the attack again with Tony McCarthy. Seen a lot of the ball so far in this opening 18 19 minutes, as has Connor Staff, the sole Gilliam Palace Kenry score. Ball laid down as far as Dara Deegan was well marshalled by Jason Fitzgibbon. It's going to be a sideline ball for Gilliam Palace Kenry. It's given in quick and it's another poor ball in. Wasted possession from Gilliam Palace Kenry on that stage, Matt, and it's indicative of the opening 20 minutes of this game. Yeah, indicative, of it and uh, it, it, it reflects, and you, you must say that it, it, it's 20 minutes of very, very poor fare for a county final. Um, very, very, very disappointing. I, I, looking at the two teams and looking at what's happening out in front of us for the last 20 minutes, I just cannot see where, where the ignition is up where the spark is going to come that, that's going to kick this game into life we had that great point by Connor Staff quickly followed by a very well engineered goal by Capamore the game was flat before it it's even flatter since it's Kalima Palace Kenry on the attack once more Jonathan Hayes has spotted a foul off the ball and it's going to be a chance you'd imagine for Sean Barry it's just outside the just on the 21 metre line, the Capamore 21 metre line. It's another chance for Kalima Palace Henry. Sean Barry has hit two frees so far in this game. He's not going to be taking this one. Looks to be Peter Nash, Matt. Yeah. Barry off the freeze fairly early here. Yeah, yeah, Peter Nash. Um, it's, it's scorable, but it's not a gimme. Um, there's a bit of work in it. If Peter Nash can steer it between the posts, he does satisfactorily. Second point for Kildama Palace Kenry. Peter Nash with the free on this occasion now, and it's Capamore leading a goal and a point to two points. With 20 minutes played of this Lim Limerick Junior A Football Championship final, as Brian Lee gets play back underway, looking for Packy Doyle from the kick out. He finds Doyle, but Doyle initially loses possession. He's the man now in possession. Soon after, lays the ball off to Dermot Sheehy now. All the experience in the world, she lovely ball across to him and she and 30 yard pass. She and back to Creamer, who seems to have permanently switched now over to that left wing left wing back position. Fouled as he's trying to lay the ball off. It's going to be another cap and more free just inside their own 65 meter line. And Peter O'Brien on the run now for Cap and More. So Brian leaves it off in this right hand side to Packy Doyle. Doyle, low enough pass and look to be handled on the ground by Jack Campbell, but Referee Jonathan Hayes plays away. It's a poor ball either way from Campbell. 
And it's Evan Carroll who comes away with the ball for Kalima Palace Kenry now to Larkin O'Leary. O'Leary in space initially. He's met by Con Burkery. O'Leary manages to get past Burkery. Playing advantage now is referee Jonathan Hayes and Larkin O'Leary is happy enough to, to settle for the free. Very slow paced game, Matt. Everything's happening at snail's pace. It is, it is, and there's, there's predictability about it. Um, just any of the teams are, are, are not finding that, that, that spark. Um, you, you, you'd struggle to recognise it as being a county final. Another free from Cap for Cap more after Peter Nash handled on the ground. It's Creamer who comes away with it for them. Inside to Dermot Sheehy now and back again. Hand pass over the top for Peter O'Brien. O'Brien instrumental in that only goal of the game so far. He lays the ball off. It's Joe Lonergan in possession for Capamore. 45 metres from the Kalima Palace Kenry goal. That's Bill Creamer once more. He lays the ball off to Connor Sheehan. Sheehan now looking to fashion shooting chance. It comes to Creamer. He gets a shot on goal. Falls to Murphy now. And Murphy, it's brilliantly defended there by Brian Howard. But it's Capamore again. Another good block. Mossy Sheehan on Peter O'Brien. Packy Doyle then blown up for a free. Loose challenge on. Massey Sheen, good defending from Kilima Palace Kenry on that occasion, Matt, but you'd have to say equally poor attacking from Capamore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, the attacking on both sides <coughs> at this stage is so predictable that it, 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 it's easy to defend against it. But having said that, that was a good that was a good block down at that stage. Um, they're obviously, Capamore are trying to get the ball as quickly as they can and as often as they can to Murphy. They're not succeeding um, to the extent to which they would like because he certainly is, is the danger man down here at this side. It's Kildama Palace Kenry under the attack once more with Tony McCarthy looking to find Peter Nash. With a long diagonal ball, Nash is unable to get to it before it goes out over the sideline. It's Capamore restart play now. Jason Fitzgibbon in possession. He works the ball back to his goalkeeper, Brian Leahy, and away come Capamore once more. Con Burkery with the ball up forward looking for Packy Doyle. He's marked tightly by Barry Walsh, but Doyle gets it away. He's fouled as he tried that. Pushed out over the sideline. Doyle's holding his face. Didn't seem to be too much in that one. But referee Jonathan Hayes is given the free either way. Doyle now down receiving attention. Serious enough for Jonathan Hayes to be issuing a card. It looks to be here for Barry Walsh. Indeed, it's a yellow card for the Kalima Palace Kenry left wing back. Matt, first yellow card of the game. First yellow card of the game, I suppose. Um, and in, in fairness, um, Jonathan Hayes was quite near it, and I, I think he probably saw some bit of a follow through, and um, that, that's why he seemed to be adamant from the time he blew his whistle that there was going to be book work and that there was going to a card was going to follow. Andy Murphy with the free was tailing to the left and wide, but managed to keep in play by from a cap and more point of view. It's Brian Fitzgerald now with the ball, lays the ball back to Connor Sheehan. Sheehan on the run against Massey Sheehan of Kalima Palace Kenry. It's Connor Sheehan, lays the ball back, shooting chance here for cap and more. Ball's dropping, Packy Doyle gets a fist in it, but it's going to fall to a Kalima Palace Kenry player. It's cleared downfield, it's a fairly poor one. And Eamon Sheehan's there for Cap Moore. Lays the ball off to Con Burkery. Burkery now, hand pass for Doyle. Doyle, man just fou fouled down in front of it. It's another big challenge on him. Ball's laid off, to shot in by Declan Deere, but that's going to harm, fall harmlessly wide. Referee Jonathan Hayes bringing the play back though for a free for Capamore, it's going to be another card here. It's Packy Doyle, the man for the second time who was hit. It's to be Dara Walsh this time, and it's another yellow card for Kildama Palace Kenry, and it's another Walsh in the book. Yeah, um, Packy, Packy Doyle is, is a lively player, and <coughs> to see certainly drew those two fouls, um, but <coughs> it's a free. Oh no! In fact, he's a, he left the advantage was played. He went back for the yellow card, and it's going to be John Chalk to restart play for Kildama Palace Kenry with a kick out. Chalk goes long, looking for Keel Maloney. Maloney breaks the ball down. It's Massey Sheehan now with possession for Kalima Palace Kenry. Sheehan now forced onto the right hand side. Plays the ball back to his captain, Tony McCarthy. McCarthy under severe pressure from Captain Moore. Man, and that man was Declan Deere, but referee Jonathan Hayes says it's a free to Kalima Palace Kenry. Another slow build up. Ball goes all the way back. Devin Carroll. In fact, it's Kevin O'Connell with possession. It's a poor hand pass from Kevin O'Connell. Kildama Palace Kenry managed to keep the ball. Lance McCarthy comes away with it now up to Sean Barry. Barry looking to ignite this Kildama Palace Kenry team now. It's Connor Staff. Staff with one of their two points so far. Staff, decent ball into Declan Deegan, but it bounces over his head. 
Peter Nash manages to get possession now. And on to Robert McHugh. Bob McHugh now on the run. McHugh forced back to Nash. Nash left footed. It's going to drop. And it drops over the bar. Fine score this time from Kalima Pellis Henry Matt. And it's a fine score that the game badly, badly needed. Badly, badly needed. And um, look, it was a very, very slow build up again. And in many ways, it was a fractured build up. In, and it eventually got up to Peter Nash. And I. I think he made the most of the scoring chance because it, it, it wasn't as clear cut as some of the ones that were earlier on but certainly a good point from Peter Nash one one to three points the scoreline I think tells it all a very very poor game Declan Deegan now in possession with Dara Deegan sorry for Kalima Palace Kenry he lays it off to Nash Nash Tony McCarthy and that's much better football from Kalima Palace Kenry very well worth scoring we're all square here again in the Limerick Junior A Football Championship Final in Newcastle West Kappa Moore 1-1 Kildoyma four points, Matt, and that's more like it. That's certainly more like it. A bit of urgency in, uh, in, in that particular and a uh, bit of purpose in it and um, the execution from Tony McCarthy, very good for an equaliser. Brian Lee, the restart play here from for Capamore with the kick out. There's a couple of Capamore players going up for it. Referee Jonathan Hayes says one of them was pushed. It's going to be a free for them. Taken quickly by Bill Kramer across the Dermot Sheehy. Sheehy now advancing forward. He's got Peter O'Brien on his right flank, and it's O'Brien now in possession. He lays the ball off. And it's Declan Deer for Capamore into Andy Murphy, the dangerous Murphy. Murphy forced to come back outside. He still manages to get a shot away. He skies this one a little bit. Punch in there. John Chalk eventually forced to punch it. Ball comes back. Just another slow chance for Capamore trying to get the shot away but unable to referee Jonathan Hayes awards a free bit of keystone cops about that attack Matt from Capamore eventually ending up with a free from 21 metres out Ah look it's comical if, if it wasn't so serious because this, this is a, a dreadfully poor county final so far and um, I, I, I think that, that that passage of play part of a microcosm of, of how poor it is um, now the, the net result of it is a free to Capamore, which is a scoreable free and which is scored by, I think, was it Brian Fitzgerald? Indeed, it was Brian Fitzgerald who puts Capamore back into the lead. It's two points for Fitzgerald. Andy Murphy with the other score. They lead Kilimo Palace Kenry 1 2 to four points as we approach half time of this Fitzgerald Woodlands House Hotel sponsored Junior A Football Championship final here in Newcastle West. John Chalk takes. The goal kick and it's well caught by Tony McCarthy for the mark. McCarthy now lays the ball out right to Connor Staff. He's Mossy Sheehan in front of him, but it's Staff who looks the goal on under pressure from Bill Creamer. But Staff beats Creamer initially and he's away now with Staff. Staff on the run. He's already shown what he can do in this game with a lovely point. He's fouled. It's a good run from Connor Staff, Matt. And you'd have to think Kildama Palace Henry might be better off getting Connor Staff on the ball more often. Yeah, in, patch, in patches there and cameos that he's been, been on the ball like he, he has. And he, it was he that, that got, got the first score of the game, um, which was a very well taken individual score. And certainly when he came in there, he, he, he certainly asked questions of the Capamore defence to the extent that there's a defender now after getting a yellow card. I'm trying to figure out from here who, who it is. Um, Jason Fitzgibbon? I'm not, not sure from here. Um, John, uh, we, we, we'll just have to follow it. Um, which you would expect Peter to know it, it, it is actually Ono Dunahu. As Nash puts this one over the bar, Ono Dunahu booked for that challenge on Connor Staff. Staff, with the, they're all square again anyway here in Newcastle West. 1 2 to 5 points. And it's a tricky one now because Ono Dunahu has been doing a decent man marking job on Peter Nash thus far Matt and he'll have to watch himself for the rest yeah, of the game absolutely he'll have to, have to be careful now for the, for the, for the second for the, for the second half um, and there will be at least one minute of additional time one minute yeah one minute of additional time here at the end of this first half as Kepa Moore go on the attack again it's Sheehy now back to Peter O'Brien O'Brien finds it into Joe Lonergan Lonergan with a ball across attempted ball across onto Connor Sheen's run it's fallen to Jack Campbell Campbell now lays the ball back shooting chance here and it's gone over the bar and it looks to be it is a point for Captain Moore and it's the man who's got it is Eamon Sheehan Sheehan coming up from midfield with that point well laid back to him from Jack Campbell in fact it's Connor Sheehan who's got that score not Eamon Sheehan Connor Sheehan with number 14 on his back fine score 
Well worked eventually. Joel Allergan with the pass across. He was looking for someone else. Felt to Campbell. Campbell had the sense to bring the ball back to Sheehan and Sheehan Matt made no mistake yeah it was, it was a well, well, well taken score but again the build up was, was, was you know whilst it had the desired result and I suppose the end justifies the means but um, like it, it, it certainly it, 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 the scoring chance happened by accident it's Andy Murphy now fattening a chance for himself here at the end of this first half again it's tail to the right and wide indicative of the poor first half we've had the experience here in Newcastle West in this Junior A Football Championship final. It's one that Capamore lead 1-3 to 5 points as we approach half times. John Chalk's kick out. It's brilliantly won by Peter O'Brien in midfield there, but it's Brian Fitzgerald who comes away with it for Capamore. Fitzgerald on the run, he's fouled, tripped. Referee Jonathan Hayes calling over Tony McCarthy. The Kildaima Palace Kenry captain, he looks to be going into the book as well. In fact, it's just a ticking for Tony McCarthy. Free chance here for Capamore Matt. It's going to be Brian Fitzgerald to take it again. It's long enough one, right on the 45 metre line. The score they could do with in the lead up to half time, the lead by a point, but to take a two point advantage into the second half. It's Fitzgerald now lining this one up. It's a decent enough strike, but we can see from here it's kept in play. Ball falls. Chance for Capamore. They're going to have the two point lead anyway. And it's Connor Sheehan with a second point in the space of two or three minutes. And Capamore into a lead now, one four to five points, Matt. Yeah, again the execution was 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 very good, and I think Capamore, when they'll reflect back on on the start that they had, and the pressure they were under for the first what first quarter, that that they will um, that they will be very very happy to be going in at halftime with with a, a two points cushion. But overall, um, it has been a very, very disappointing game. Um, uh, it, it has never caught fire. Um, you would, you would, I, I certainly would have expected more from Kildare Palace Kenry going for a first title. I would certainly have um, expected more from Capamore trying to sort of rescue um, something decent off the season after they were relegated from the uh, from the senior hurling championship as you know they've already picked up the junior b hurling title and were they to add the county junior a football title to it like it would be some consolation for losing um look this game is on a knife edge it's riddled with silly freeze it's it's riddled with mistakes it's riddled with turnovers, unforced errors, incomplete passes, it, it can only get better John. Thoughts of Matt O'Callaghan of the Weekly Observer and Vale Star. Half time here in the Fitzgerald Woodlands House Hotel. Junior A Football Championship Final. Capamore 1-4. Five points. Join us for the second half.